Yeah, making memories. I mean, if you're a club that doesn't necessarily win a lot of trophies season in, season out, it is about making those memories. Middlesbrough have won one big trophy in their history, and that was the League Cup 20 years ago. And so they're not renowned as trophy winners, serial trophy winners like Chelsea are. And so it's up to Michael Carrick and the Middlesbrough players to make those memories. As the light show begins here at the Riverside Stadium, teams are in the tunnel, by the way. Mobile phone lights are on. The Chelsea end isn't necessarily full. You might expect that on a midweek so far with a second leg to come next week. The TIFO slowly going up in the south stand away to our right. Bring it home again is the banner behind the goal away to our right in that south stand. Of course, 20 years ago, they brought it home. That made the trophy the League Cup. The fans urging their team, Middlesbrough, to bring it home again. It was an unwinnable semi-final that season against the Invincibles. They won at Arsenal. They won here at the Riverside. They got through and they beat Bolton in the final as well. A red and white checkered display, the TIFO, away to our right as some of the scarves are flying around the Riverside Stadium above the heads of the Middlesbrough fans. Teams are waiting. They will hear this noise in the tunnel. They're on their way out now. And pig bag. Happens got a brand new pig bag. The big punk dance track from the 80s. That really became an anthem during the Brian Robson era here at Middlesbrough. Rings around the ground. They took it away for a short time. Fans were having that. They brought it back straight away. Teams on their way out. Second semi is tomorrow. Liverpool, Fulham, first leg live on TalkSport from 7. FA Cup replays next Tuesday and Wednesday on TalkSport. In between, there's Premier League exclusive live commentary. It's Friday night, two of the bottom three on TalkSport. And it's Luton at Burnley. And then on Saturday lunchtime from 11 on TalkSport, it's a derby as Chelsea who we're about to watch take on Fulham. Tonight, it's a cup semi-final live on TalkSport. Middlesbrough against Chelsea with former England striker Dean Ashton alongside your commentator, Jim Bradford. Thank you, Adrian, and welcome to one of the biggest footballing nights that Teesside has ever seen. Was 20 years ago, they last played the domestic cup semi-final here at the Riverside. A night of glorious success, with Middlesbrough overcoming Arsenal to reach the final. The foundation lay for the only major honour in Borough history, the crowning glory of the club's post-war golden era. Well, two years later, came the Riverside's night of nights. Stour stunned, blowing a 3-0 aggregate lead on an immortal evening in the UEFA Cup semi-final. But such occasions are yet to be repeated. Now, Teesside witnesses a semi-final again and another encounter with Chelsea, who twice broke Borough Hearts in 90s finals and who twice knocked them out of the cup here in the last 10 years or so. This is the Middlesbrough team, Dean Ashton, Aussie keeper Tom Glover, who is outstanding against Villa. The back three of Vandenberg, Fry and Engel, Jones, Hackney House and Barlaster and Bangura, with Crooks of Lazzy Lat up front. And it's a side that I think, with that experience of Housen in the middle, with the youth of Hackney just in front as well, but I think there's going to be crucial roles for the two wing-backs, Jones and Bangura, I think up against the likes of Sterling and Madueke when they have to try and defend is going to be key. The Blues own recent cup pedigree, one of regret and what ifs. Runners up in five domestic cup finals in the last five years. Pochettino's talked about the key to defeating championship opponents being to match their effort and to set the tempo of the contest. He's also demanded an improvement in mental and physical intensity following a poor first half against Preston on Saturday. Yeah, and I just I look at that front three and Palmer in particular. What a talent. I'm still amazed Manchester City let him go because he's just strolled in to London and into Chelsea saying, I'm the man, I'm the player, and I think he is, without a doubt, the key man tonight. It's Petrovic in goal, Gusto de Sassi, Silver and Colwell, Caicedo and Fernandez, Madweke, Gallagher and Sterling with Palmer up front. Referee Sam Barrett and there is no VAR. While the players are out in position, Middlesbrough, red shirts, shorts and socks, kicking from left to right in this first half and defending the river end of the ground. Chelsea in their change kit of much darker blue than normal. And they'll kick from right to left. Two sets of players out and assembled and came out early so just a little bit of hanging around to do before we get to the prescribed kickoff time. 
of 8 o'clock. Well, the last time the Middlesbrough and Chelsea met in the League Cup, it was the Blues who were victorious underneath Wembley's Twin Towers. And 26 years on, they cross swords again. A Wembley return is the prize. It's Middlesbrough that get us off and running in the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg here on Talk Sport. Now the ball immediately down for Dan Barlas, who's had a really good season after his move from Rotherham. Ball played by Engel. Now to Bangura on the Middlesbrough left. And Dale Fry, vastly experienced player, Middlesbrough born and bred at the heart of the Borough defence. Just turns the ball back to his goalkeeper, Glover, who was really impressive the other night. One particular save from McGinn was exceptional. Now a really poor defensive header from Colwell. Latty Lad is in and scuffed the shot under pressure from Disassi. A sight of goal inside 40 seconds for Middlesbrough. And one that he should really have taken. Yeah, it was a mistake from Colwell. Just trying to nod that back to Thiago Silva. Latty Lad was onto it quickly. He might have done himself an injury because of it, though. I tell you what, the pace of Disassi incredible over 10 yards he just ate up the ground put massive amount of pressure on Latila who just couldn't quite stretch because of that pressure from De Sassi and in the end no power on the shot that's brilliant electric defending from De Sassi pace to burn and Colwell owes him one because it was a really poor defensive header that he just tried to cushion and you just looking down at Colwell now on this near touch he's got his hands on his hips and he's just surveying the moment a player that has never played in a major cup semi-final before and that was a little indoctrination into life in the last four of the cup competition and he's got the mistake out of his system he wore hope and there was no harm done Laddy Lap back on his feet uh, seemingly is going to be able to continue though he's walking very gingerly uh, over towards the uh, dead ball line and the ball came on his right foot and he was just about to strike it and as he came in now Dizassi has taken none of the ball there Ladilat's got the shot in and Dizassi has come in and has made contact with the Middlesbrough striker if there were VAR here tonight they'd be looking at that <laughs> they would they would, have given a penalty? they would be looking at it I mean they might they might give a penalty there should be absolutely no reason to a defender is allowed to try and block the ball and there be contact without it being a penalty because Lati Lap as well, by the way, as he's taking the strike, he's bringing his right foot across into the path of De Sassi. But what I do really like is, you know, we're, you're sort of 30 seconds in to Sassi when he's really asked, what's his pace like? I tell you what, it's ridiculous. Well, here's Colwell in possession now for Chelsea. Lati Lap given permission to come back onto the field. We played three minutes or three minutes of elapsed. We've probably seen barely a minute of action but here's Raheem Sterling coming in off the left hand side here for Chelsea it's mopped up inside the box by Harrison playing the first major semi-final of his career at the age of 35 and as Enzo Fernandez tries to roll it back in towards Sterling it's gone past him and out of play for a goal kick that'll be taken by Glover Borough coming into this on the back of two defeats in a row four home defeats in five games as well Chelsea four away defeats in five, so something's got to give. I don't know that Laddie Lat's going to be able to continue, Dean, because he's down again, uh, midway between the edge of his own penalty area and the centre circle. That once the ball had gone out of play from that last attack, he went back down, having received a couple of minutes of treatment, and it looks as though his race might be run. They're going to get Coburn ready, and he'll be on in a moment. Well, again, you, you sort of think less than a minute into the game, and you're asked to turn and full sprint which is very different than sprinting in the warm-up. You're sprinting against somebody else and he's probably just extended himself too much and maybe just tweaked a muscle. But that's a real blow for him. You can see how gutted he is with his head in his hands. But it's going to be a chance for Coburn. So Coburn has uh, warmed up and he'll be coming on in a moment. And uh, an appreciative round of applause for Latte Lat, whose night has lasted just four minutes. A uh, couple of goals in the EFL Trophy. Wickham leading West Ham under 21 by two goals still at half time. In the National League, a filed who picked up their first one in nine last time out. Two up with two in three minutes at home to Hartlepool, who are now being managed by Lenny Lawrence, the former Middlesbrough manager. Just 
eight, nine miles up the coast from here. So we're back underway. Coburn on. A player who uh, hails from B-Dale. Well, just west of here. The ball played for by Harrison. Headed away by Thiago Silva. Helped on through the midfield. Madweke can pick it up. Palmer having a look to see who was where. He's got Gallagher ahead of him. He's got a shot in. Glover's beaten it away. Came back out in a central position. Borough first of the seconds. Get it away. Jones, Crooks. Now back for Barlasa. Bangura making an early run forward. Barlasa saw him, but he didn't think he was going to be able to fire the ball that far past Gallagher to be able to find him. He's retained possession really well. And Borough with uh, Rav Vandenberg, the teenager, the Dutchman, on the right-hand side of the back line, just calms things down and goes back to Dale Fry. Yeah, first a little sighter, isn't it, for Palmer? Pretty similar, actually, to the Luton opportunity where he just drilled it into the corner. Now Coburn putting the pressure on Dizassi. And uh, Dizassi using his pace to get back goal side and then ends up winning the throw off Crooks who came across to very quickly close him down. It's nil-nil, six minutes gone. And a really good chance at either end in the opening six minutes of this Carabao Cup semi-final first leg here on TalkSport. Here's the former England international, Dean Ashton. Yeah, just going back to Palmer's opportunity, sometimes it can be difficult when you're really straight on outside the area, in line with the penalty spot, in line with the goalkeeper, to exactly know where to pick your spot. Do you try and curl it to one side? Do you try and drill it low, which is what Palmer tried to do? And it, was a, it was a decent save from, from Glover, from a decent strike from Palmer, but that's what we're going to be looking at. A bit of work from one of the wide players and then into Palmer. You know, he's made such an impression. He's played 20 games for Chelsea. He's been involved in 15 goals. Uh, they're not a prolific side, as has been well documented. So eight goals and seven assists in 20 games is a very tidy return couldn't add to it there Enzo Fernandez has just given a free kick away he's found Hackney and Middlesbrough take it very quickly They're trying to get as many seconds as they possibly can of playing time out of this first leg tonight might be a different story next week Engel played forward here for the dark haired Hackney in the midfield now works out towards Bangura. Crooks has got to stay on side, but he's in the middle. It's played in towards Jones, who couldn't get a shot in. Appeals for handball came from the more optimistic Borough fans. Gallagher chips it away out towards the right-hand side. We've got a fantastic cut time to make in here. Brilliant energy, brilliant pace for the play. Really good move down the left-hand side for Middlesbrough. Mangura just needed to pick out a man. In the end, he just fed it in there towards the penalty spot. He didn't get his head up and really pick out a player. Coburn was completely free if he'd have just seen the pullback. In the EFL Trophy, James Tilly's 11th of the season for Wimbledon. They lead Oxford by a golden hill. And live over on TalkSport 2 right now, we've got live coverage of Derby against Bradford. That one remains nil-nil. They've just begun the second half. TalkSport Network again giving you a choice of listening tonight. There's Isaiah Jones, who played non-league football in the London area at the start of his career. A play back now for Housen, down towards Crooks. Crooks on the edge of the area, feeding Jones the right wing back. Cut out by Enzo Fernandez as he played it in the box and looking for the run of Hackney. And Vandenberg again, just able to play it forward for Borough towards halfway for Barlasa. It's all Middlesbrough at these early stages, notwithstanding the fact that Cole Palmer's had that one opportunity, but it's Carrick's men who are dominating possession. Very different approach from then tonight to that that we saw on Saturday here against Villa in the FA Cup. Yeah, there's been a great tempo actually to their passing and movement. But actually, I've seen a difference in Chelsea. Chelsea, in the last few games as well, have allowed the opposition some of the ball, and they've just got into a nice, compact, defensive unit. They did it against Luton for long periods of the game. I think it's something that Pochettino is looking to work towards, and then when they do get the ball, of course, they've got the quality and the pace to break. Now, here's De Zassi. Last time he and Thiago Silva played a centre-half together, De Zassi played on the right, Silva on the left. They're the other way round tonight quite probably a good job that they are bearing in mind that it was a disaster rather than Silva who was coming back to cover that early run from Laddie Lat inside the opening minute of the game that saw a really good opportunity spurn for Middlesbrough and Laddie Lat go off injured the Ivorian striker here's Gallagher for Enzo Fernandez a second semi-final is tomorrow the first leg of that Liverpool against Fulham at Anfield and it's the 
Same schedule as tonight. Here on Talk Sport, the build-up will start at seven ahead of an eight o'clock kickoff tomorrow. Raheem Sterling, left-hand side of the penalty area, getting towards the byline. He's got the ball in. It's headed away by Fry, out of the corner of the penalty area for Colwell. Colwell lays it back towards halfway. Dizassi is able to pick it up and go square to his right four, Thiago Silva. And Thiago Silva well into his 40th year a man who won 11 domestic cup competitions in France has lost a couple of FA Cup finals in England Cole into the feet of Sterling back again now Enzo Fernandez. 10 yards inside Middlesbrough territory right footed clip forward Vandenberg just puts out his arm and stops Sterling getting in past him and the ball rolls through for Tom Glover in the Middlesbrough goal with 10 minutes in and it's Middlesbrough nil Chelsea nil here on side on TalkSport. And they're going to have to concentrate for the whole game, the likes of Vandenberg and Engel, just because of the movement of Raheem Sterling and Madueke when they dive inside the uh, the wing backs. That's when those two wide centre backs need to be alert. Raheem Sterling, especially, I think, has looked so sharp over the first 10 yards this season. He's really got that kind of zip back to his play. Here's the first time the Chelsea have been here for a couple of years. Lukaku and Ziyech, the man on target when they won in the FA Cup quarterfinals a couple of seasons ago. As I mentioned earlier, Thiago Silva, the only Chelsea player featured that day who's involved tonight. There's six of Borough's starters uh, from that afternoon are here. Uh, a couple of them injured, no Paddy McNair, uh, no uh, Anthony Dykesdale tonight either. Silva, long ball over the top, but easy again for Vandenberg to judge. Rav Vandenberg, the younger brother of uh, Sepp Vandenberg, the Liverpool player. And the ball goes through for Glover again. Yeah, notice Conor Gallagher is very high, actually. Very much the closest to, to Cole Palmer. Ready for that kind of second press as Palmer presses on his own. Conor Gallagher will just be surveying where that passing angle is going to be and can he intercept? That's what he's best at. And here's Bangora chesting it down combining well with Hackney then Bangura laying it back missed Engel and Madueke can bring it forward here for Chelsea deflected away by Lucas Engel the first corner of the night goes Chelsea's way and they'll take it over on the right flank Cole Palmer the man that will trot across to take it 12 minutes gone Middlesbrough nil Chelsea nil second leg of this fortnight tomorrow a fortnight tonight I beg your pardon and it's live also here on Talk Sport. Chelsea getting plenty of bodies forward for this first corner. Two inside the six yard box, two more on the edge of the six yard box. It's Caicedo and Fernandez. And now Sterling will make his way and uh, stands on the corner of the six yard box. Madweke unmarked on the edge of the area. Gallagher unmarked as well. Plenty of whip on it. Glover came to meet it, headed away from in front of him. And he goes out of play for a second corner in quick succession. It probably would have been Glover's ball, but the Borough defence not in a position to take any chances there. I don't think it was Barlasa that got his head to it to knock it away. But real good pace and swerve on that in-swinging delivery. Now try and emulate it this time. In towards that near post area again Housen leaving it for his goalkeeper it comes out for Gallagher he's sliced across the ball he goes way over the bar and out of play for a goal kick still Borough nil Chelsea nil yeah you're right about that delivery from Cole Palmer two wicked balls in and you know they're good when both the defender and goalkeeper end up going for it at the same time because they're just unsure of the pace and dip of, of the cross and then as it came back out Conor Gallagher sized it up and it was a terrible effort in the end with a bit of pressure Conor Gallagher Another one of those players that's ruining football socks up and down the country <laughs> by ripping the back of their calves. By the way, Connor, you have not got Grealish calves, so why are you doing it? You think that's what it is? It's is just pure exhibitionism. No, oh, it has to be. Of course it is. What, so for years and years and years, no one ever did it, but then because Justin Bieber did it, then everyone has. Justin Bieber? Is it Probably. Ins inside right for Tooting and Mitchum. <laughs> that Justin Bieber. Um, so you never did it that's what you're telling me of course not 
Oh, wasn't it fashion in your day, was it? You'd have been doing it. Here's Madwake. Little reverse ball down the right-hand side of the penalty area. Well read by Housen there ahead of Enzo Fernandez. He blazes it clear. And he goes out of play for a throw. Uh, Middlesbrough had a good six or seven minute spell of possession, but it's now Chelsea's turn to be on top. These uh, ladies passage of play. And predominantly in Middlesbrough territory. The throw goes back actually into Chelsea's own half, but Disassi will find Silver and uh, they're going to be able to build from the back again quickly with uh, Levi Colwell. Uh, the England man chipping it forward. Sterling nodding it down. Conor Gallagher coming onto it. Housen is with him, trying to stop him turning. Sterling has it, motions to cross and cuts it back onto his right foot. Now play forward by Colwell to Gallagher with the blonde hair to Colwell again. Disassi coming forward. 35 yards out, he's just laid it out towards the right-hand touchline. Gusto. Hackney very quickly on the scene, but he can't dispossess him. Colwell, back for Madweka. Disassi for Thiago Silva. Colwell to his left-hand side. Sterling, a further four down the left flank. Played in towards Madweka instead and knocked away easily by the Danish defender, Lucas Engel. Now Bangura to Engel once more on the left of the three centre-halves for Borough, and he just exchanges passes with his goalkeeper and is able to turn it forward. Plays it down the left-hand side for Alex Bangura, the Sierra Leone international that they picked up from second division football in the Netherlands, and what an acquisition he's proving to be. Long ball four from Bangura, and right on cue, it's way off target, and goes all the way through to the Chelsea goalkeeper Petrovic, who has only really seen one moment of action so far which was the early shot from Lade La Chelsea trying to get the pacey Madweke in he's just given Bangura a shove near the edge of the penalty area and it's a free kick that Middlesbrough will take it's nil-nil 16 minutes gone Dean Ashton very much in the balance in these early yeah, stages yeah very very even almost as if Chelsea allowed Middlesbrough to have the first five or seven minutes just to get that energy out of their system and then they've taken control, started to get the likes of Caicedo, Fernandez, and Conor Gallagher on the ball. It was a decent ball down the side, a good foot race again between Bangura and Madueke. And I just wonder whether, again, a bit like Lati Laugh, just that when you're up against the elite, it's amazing how physical and how quick these top level players are and he might have just extended himself yeah absolutely he went to ground and was holding his right hamstring and Jonathan Woodgate and Michael Carrick are in conversation and it looks as though they might have to make another change because of injury well the prospect is going to be tough enough uh, but the signal comes over from the Middlesbrough medical staff over on the far touchline who are attending to Bangura and they indicate that the change is necessary, that he can't continue, and they've lost two of the big hitters inside the opening 17 minutes here. Yeah, it's so unfortunate from Latte Laff and Mangura's point of view, and especially Michael Carrick, who's having to make substitutions when he wouldn't particularly want to. As I've just said, you know, it is a step up, and it's the one thing I thought when I went from Championship level to Premier League level, the athleticism, the difference in athleticism from the two leagues is astounding. And sometimes just there, you know, Bangura and Latidaf have both had to fully go for it and have both just, I think, tweaked a muscle. Well, only now he's he, uh, getting back to his feet over on the far side and he's uh, going to make his way off very gingerly. The goalkeeper goes across to offer his commiserations. Madweke as well, but there was uh, absolutely nothing that Madweke did wrong there except to engage him in a chase. And they're going to bring Clark on. So he's a centre-half, so they're going to have to shuffle things around. They might put Clark in the back three and move Engel out to the left wing-back position. Uh, they've let a left-back go this week, Hayden Coulson who made his first appearance for five months as a substitute on Saturdays. Not had too many opportunities this season, so he's gone out on loan to Blackpool today. But it looks as though they're going to move Engel out to the left-hand side. Clark, who started against Villa at the weekend, the former Portsmouth defender, is the man that is going to come on. And Bangura, very slowly and gingerly, under his own steam, I'm delighted to say, but clearly in a lot of pain, is making his way over towards this uh, near side where he'll come off. So 19 minutes in, probably seen only about 14, 15 minutes worth of action. 
Middlesbrough have lost two players to injury, but it remains nil-nil. Don't forget tomorrow, Liverpool against Fulham, the Carabao Cup semi-final first leg coming your way on Talk Sport. Now we've got more live action for you over the course of the weekend as well. Friday night, the rearranged Premier League game between Burnley and Luton kicks off at 7.45 here on Talk Sport. Hull against Norwich, exclusive on Talk Sport 2, 8 o'clock Friday night. And then Chelsea back in Premier League action at the weekend. The West London derby at home to Fulham. And we've got that one live and exclusive for you on Talk Sport as well. Kicking off at 12.30, part of game day exclusive this Saturday. So the change is made. Clark on for Bangura. We're 20 minutes in. And it's Middlesbrough nil, Chelsea nil here on Talk Sport. Dean Ashton. Well, it's just unsettling. You will have done some work over the recent few days on the starting 11 coming up against Chelsea and already just over 20 minutes gone you've had to make two changes which ultimately is unsettling for the players Clark getting a first touch finding Fry Vandenberg turning it back to his goalkeeper playing out of Matt Clark again and Clark sporting or rocking should I say the Dean Ashton haircut playing it forward for Coburn's run but he's offside and it's a free kick which will be taken by Chelsea midway between the uh, edge of the uh, penalty area and the halfway line and that, that isn't the bleach blonde by the way uh, no it's, it's it's the Dean Ashton 2024 vintage which a, a lot of people prefer <laughs> here's Colwell now Thiago Silva Bizassi wearing the black gloves on what is a pretty cold night here on Teesside now, colder in London though I understand tonight than it is uh, up here in the North East Thiago Silva brings it forward inside the centre circle. Palmer just wanted to make a run, just had the run on Dale Fry for a moment, but he needed the ball to be played early, and it wasn't. It was uh, worked instead out towards the right flank where it's laid back by uh, oh, Gusto. And now back for Thiago Silva again. Into the feet of Caicedo and straight back for the Brazilian. Now he works it forward into the feet of Palmer and gets it straight back. Palmer clipping it forward, helped on by Enzo Fernandez. Down the left-hand touchline for Sterling. Sterling cutting inside, trying to get away from Vandenberg. Finding Palmer, who's uh, playing as the false nine, who's almost uh, back behind Caicedo for a moment when he picked up possession there. Now he'll make his way forward. Tenzo Fernandez is the furthest forward of the Chelsea players for a moment. They can't they get across and to try and find him, although Madweke has uh, won it back and in conjunction with Gusto wins the Chelsea throw over on the far touchline. Well, I wondered how long it would take before Cole Palmer would get frustrated and bored and making runs as a, as a centre forward. And it hasn't taken that long. He started to drift deep because he wants to be involved. That's the type of player he is. That's why I love him in that 10 role. But what it does is it leaves you absolutely nobody at the top end of the pitch for the Middlesbrough centre-backs to occupy so it's comfortable for them uh, West Ham's under 21s have one back at Wickham in the uh, Bristol Street Motors Trophy uh, but they trail 2-1 they goal in the National League Dagenham and Redbridge leading at Barnet by a golden nil which uh, would be a shot Barnet third Dagenham and Redbridge in the bottom eight here's Sterling right footed ball clips inside the area beats everybody and goes out of play the game has just lost a little bit of rhythm with the the second of those injuries Bangura going down and the neither side able to really get a foothold back in the game in the three or four minutes since the play resumed no and it was Chelsea wasn't it that was in control before the injury and it's just taken a, a few minutes to get going again Sterling with the right idea to try and swing that in towards Palmer who'd made a, a run off the back of Dale Fry but it was way way over here Ryan Sterling, who has uh, won this competition four times, has scored or played in the final against Chelsea back in 2019, the, uh, the second of the four triumphs that he's had in the League Cup. He did score in the fourth round triumph against Blackburn this time around. They've uh, beaten Wimbledon, Brighton, Blackburn and Newcastle on penalties to get here. Uh, Middlesbrough's games have all been against EFL opposition, but all been away from home. All of Chelsea's ties at home so far. Now an opportunity for Gusto to bring it forward for Chelsea. Down the right-hand side. Madueke couldn't get it in his stride. It hit his Achilles and came back Gusto's way. Coburn trying to win it back. Battling away. The tall, blonde-haired striker for Middlesbrough who came on as an early substitute. Enzo Fernandez has got it again in his own half of the centre circle. 
Played out to the Chelsea right hand side for Madweka. Palmer wanted the ball knocked square, but it goes back instead. Disassi. Back for Thiago Silva again. And his yellow boots the Brazilian. On from Enzo Fernandez. Good run down the Chelsea left hand side. Came from Conor Gallagher. And Harrison, watching him every step of the way, put a challenge in. Ball roll past a pair of them. Goes out. The referee Sam Barrett says uh, no foul. Oh, he has given a foul. In fact, he's given it Middlesbrough's way. Free kick taken quickly by Vandenberg. Bang for Glover. Flight it out of the Middlesbrough left where Engel will help it on. We're not going to see the dynamic runs from Engel that uh, Bangura can provide out of the Middlesbrough left. No, exactly. It just changes the, the dynamic of the side. And Chelsea just very much in control with possession, that's for sure. But whenever I see a team in the way that Chelsea are playing at the moment when you've got Gallagher and Palmer as your two kind of central forward players and you've got a, a deep lying defence that's blockading the way is you have to have runners in behind you have to you have to try and stretch the, the Middlesbrough defence or draw one of them out of position or take one back into position which is what Madueke just tried to do yep and try to get round the side of Clark in fact, Middlesbrough have gone flattened off to a four since the change was made. And, and Engels playing as a conventional left back. Vandenberg now is a conventional right back with Clark alongside Fry in the heart of the defence. Uh, a lot of the Middlesbrough games are so fluid anyway that they will just drop Jones back in as a wing back when they haven't got possession. But he's got such a good engine on him that he will push forward when they've got the ball. Well, it becomes a four anyway, naturally, so they're not being asked to do something they're not used to doing. Crooks can't feed it in towards Jones. Middlesbrough had no attacking impetus in the last 15 minutes or so, and then that's a foul on Sterling on halfway. And a free kick that Chelsea will take quickly with Enzo Fernandez. Yeah, they've just got to be careful, Middlesbrough, that they don't panic when they have the ball and think they have to get it forward too quickly. They've got defending to do here. Madweke flicking it with his right foot opportunity for Gusto to try and get in Clark across the cover played forward towards Hackney and he goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the uh, Middlesbrough left just took a, a deflection Hayden Hackney who's played for both Scotland and England's under 21s is English from um, down the road from here in Redcut here's Gallagher winning it back for Chelsea and uh, playing in Cole Palmer now on the right-hand side of the penalty area. Gusto will um, try and wrap his foot around the ball. Engel defended it well. I knew that he was uh, just going to get a little kick there, but he shepherded the ball over the line. And it's out of play for a goal kick. And with uh, nearly half an hour gone, very little in the way of constructive goal-scoring opportunity for either side. Michael Carrick will predominantly be the happier of the two managers, I would imagine, with the way things have gone so far if you take the injuries out of the situation but of course most people think that Borough have to garner a first leg lead here to be at par for the second leg at Stamford Bridge you would think so but I think he'd be so pleased with the shape defensively of the side Chelsea are struggling to make way really Madueke trying to take on Clark he's inside the penalty area still he goes and he needed Fry to come across and stick his foot in front of Madweke when he's got the ball and can drive directly he causes real problems they beat Clark and Fry came across to savage the situation for Middlesbrough Chelsea have another corner yeah that was important defending in the end but it just shows Madweke against Clark is a mismatch he just glided past him like he wasn't even there and then Barlazer came across didn't want to take a chance with the challenge Chelsea take the corner short and Sterling has it at his feet back for Palmer Palmer left Coburn on the deck ball inside the area Cole with a header it's over the bar half chance yeah most definitely Cole Palmer lovely bit of skill just to get free on the right hand side and just fed it in no real pace which is why Cole will have to put it on himself and ended up putting it over the bar with too much power well, Isaiah Jones has been brought down and Levi Cole will pick up a yellow card 
And it's a free kick to Middlesbrough, level with the right-hand side of the area, but some way outside the box. They haven't had a single shot since the first minute of the game, but will this provide an opportunity to tease the ball forward for the aerial targets, the likes of Clark and Fry? And will they be able to garner something from this? Chelsea have been able to stop them getting close to the penalty area with relative ease. But a free kick here conceded by Corwell. And Dan Ballas is the man that stands over him. Referee Sam Barrett, one of the most highly rated young officials in the country. Not the most highly rated. Uh, just a, has a quick word with Palmer, puts a line of spray on the ground. Palmer stands behind it, waits for the referee to move away. And then takes a couple of steps forward past it. Uh, the referee spotted what he was doing. In comes the free kick. Hit in very deep from Barlasa, headed down towards Crooks on the edge of the penalty area, knocked away from Crooks. The Chelsea counter attack could be on. They got bodies over on the right hand side. Gallagher trying to release Madweke, and Engel comes back to mop up. Yeah, just got in each other's way, Gallagher and Madweke. Otherwise, that counter attack was fully on. They had the numerical advantage, but just no real communication between the two. Middlesbrough in possession in the midfield with Johnny Housen. And we play 31 minutes here on Talksport. It's given away. It's called Palmer. And he's put it wide. Glorious opportunity. And it's a big, big miss. Housen trying to knock the ball square. Palmer read it, ran onto it, and got to the edge of the penalty area. Looked for all the world he was going to score. Trying to roll it into the bottom right hand corner. And he's put it two foot wide of the post. Well, with his confidence at the moment, you're expecting him to score. He reads the pass brilliantly. Now poor defensive header at the other end. It's Hayden Hackney, and it's way wide from the edge of the penalty area. Yeah, he realised that Malo Gusto had too much pace for him, Hackney, so he thought, I'm going to take this from the edge of the box, rather than try and drive in and take on Gusto. It was a poor effort in the end, just dragged it wide, but Palmer, what a chance for him. The confidence that he's got at the moment. You could see, once he read it, he then just took his time, just got it onto his left foot, faked as if he was going to curl it to the goalkeeper's right, and then pulled it towards the left, thinking he'd just roll it into the corner. Just pulled it wide. Big, big miss. Yeah, very uncharacteristic error from Cole Palmer in front of goal. Chelsea's leading goal scorer, unable to make the most of the opportunity. 13 minutes to go to half time. Live over on Talksport 2 right now. They're in the final 20 minutes of the EFL trophy game between Derby and Bradford. And it's the Bantams that lead with Sam Stubbs having broken the deadlock. And it's live for you on Talksport 2. And if you've got the Talksport app, you can easily swipe left and swipe right uh, to keep abreast with all the events that are taking place in both games. If you haven't, it's your usual app store provider. Here's Sterling in possession for Chelsea. But 13 minutes to go to half time, but there's going to be a stack of stoppage time at the end of this first half. Maybe five minutes. Ball headed away by Engel for Middlesbrough. And he goes out for a throw that'll be taken on the Chelsea right hand side. Uh, Marlo Gusto wanted the uh, ball to be uh, played to him. Uh, the ball boy uh, just knocked it away from him. <laughs> Gusto stood with his hands outstretched, asking why. Another ball boy intervened and. Cypher did it to him and Chelsea could take the throw. Played four towards Conor Gallagher. Barnett have equalised the under Dagenham and Redbridge. No surprise that it's a Nicky Kabamba goal. He's scored a couple of dozen this season now. 1-1 one, one in that game. Ball on the right-hand side of midfield with Cole Palmer. Palmer out towards Malagusta. Gusto controlling it, poking it back inside. Uh, played on by Caicedo. Crooks the substitute is uh, sorry Clark the substitute is there to try and mop up and then Fry comes back to stop Gallagher making any headway inside the penalty area and it's out of play for a goal kick and it's uh, just a, a little bit nervous from both teams at the moment yeah yeah especially Middlesbrough I think that's going to put you on edge when you give away a simple pass in midfield because they are trying to play their way out right from the goalkeeper and Gallagher shows again that you cannot switch off when you're playing that back towards a centre back. That was Dale Fry, who uh, I don't think shared your nervousness there as he uh, dropped <laughs> his shoulder inside thank, his own penalty area. Thank, thank God. <laughs> no, he got it forward, and then a free kick is uh, given away. A uh, foul on a Chelsea player, Enzo Fernandez. 
about three yards inside the uh, middles for a half ends us back on his feet very quickly it was Howson that caught him uh, Johnny Howson who is making the 715th appearance of his club career today and as I mentioned it's his first ever career semi-final he's played seven games against Chelsea in the past he's yet to win one and this one is nil-nil Chelsea get another corner Cole Palmer will uh, trot across the take and it's their fourth yeah, he's, uh, he's looked a real handful in that away, Kate. Really growing in confidence, I think, with every game that he starts. Ladies' corner comes in, Crooks heads it away. Now towards Nani Madweke, the £30 million signing from PSV. Very deep ball in from him, needed defending by Boris Dambalassa. As Kaiseido was coming in behind him, he got the last touch. It's a goal kick, Glover taking it quickly. Trying to punt it forward to get Isaiah Jones running at the back line. The ball just a little bit too heavy for that to happen. Gallagher's going to be able to pick up the seconds for Chelsea. He's put under pressure by Crooks. Finds Fernandez and Fernandez with a lovely crisp turn. Just changes the angle. Rolls it down to his left-hand side. And as it's fired forward by Corwell, he uh, plays it forward just after it's gone over the line and out of play for a Middlesbrough throw. I'll tell you what, that was close though. It was a brilliant pass from Colwell, right over the top of Vanderberg's head. Sterling was in, 1v1. Just a little smile from Colwell. A couple of games taking place in Scotland tonight in the first division. Falkirk, a goal up at home to Cove Rangers. As two of the top three meet. As Isaiah Jones tries to get in here on the edge of the penalty area. Colwell faces him up, he's got the ball in! Chelsea by a golden L. Ball work down the right hand side. Jones with the pace, got goal side. And Hackney just tiptoed onto it and flicked it in. And minutes after Cole Palmer misses a glorious opportunity to give Chelsea the lead. It's first blood to the borough. 21 years old, but he knows. He knows as a midfielder, when that ball is wide, I need to get in the box. Isaiah Jones is brilliant, and he knows that Colwell's already on a yellow card, so he can't pull him back. And he just whips it across the six-yard line, hoping that someone was in there. And Hackney, running off the back of Fernandes and Caicedo, who hadn't tracked the run, just guided the ball with his left foot. All the pace was on the cross. He just guided it past Petrovic. It's what every good goal-scoring midfielder does. You make a run, you gamble in an area, and then you've got composure to finish. And now Coburn with an opportunity to double Middlesbrough's lead. The angle is tight, challenge comes in on him. Now it's a goal kick, not even Coburn was appealing for a penalty there. A few Borough fans did. Well, Chelsea have just got to make sure that they keep their head and their nerves here, trailing by a golden hill that Hayden Hackney strike coming eight minutes before half time well he just looked quite exposed Colwell on his own there Thiago Silva wasn't there to help him out as De Sassi was earlier and then 1v1 he just couldn't make the challenge Jones made the most of it got that cross in and it just shows that you've got to make the run if you're not there if you idle towards the edge of the box if you don't make a darting run into the box you won't get those goals it was a gift and Hackney took it still such a long way to go the goal coming on 37 minutes 37 out of 180 in the tie at large but it is Middlesbrough that have the first leg and consequently the aggregate lead at the moment and they've got it again now with Jones Crooks making a run ahead of him played down the side of Colwell to find Matt Crooks Coburn's in the middle Crooks forced to check back out trying to back heel it into the path of Jones and Colwell clears Ball it comes from Clark out of the Middlesbrough left hand side back for Clark again Chelsea's last League Cup semi-final against non-Premier League opposition way back in 2007 they beat Wickham comfortably 5-1 on aggregate and they got possession back here with Palmer out towards Madweke Madweke on the edge of the area right footed 
plays into the middles for fans. Pretty identical position that he scored with against Luton. Just dragging it onto his right foot, looking to power that in to the near post top corner. Gets it horribly wrong, slices across it. And the middle of the fans love it. Well, Michael Carrick won the League Cup twice as a player. Once in 2010, once in 2017. Uh, the celebrations were no less animated at Hayden the Hackney's opener than they would have been on those two days with Manchester United. Vandenberg helping it on. 19-year-old's ball cut out. Caicedo, Coburn will chase after that because they've got their first. High ball over the top from him. Glover electing to come out of his penalty area and then took a couple of steps back. The ball's actually passed him for a moment. There's no way he was going to go in on goal. Palm was chasing him, uh, but Glover judged it to perfection. Got his hands to it. Now he's played ball at the other end. Coburn, left-hand side of the penalty area, running at Disassi, lays it back for Hackney. Hackney on the corner of the penalty area. A couple of challenges come in. Engel down by the left-hand touchline, laying it back. Hackney, Balassa, oh well played with his right foot then flicked on with his left high ball inside the area, Colwell heads it away Middlesbrough hungry for more now they've got the advantage, Housen with a strong challenge on Sterling, no foul shot comes in from Engel, it's blocked on the edge of the penalty area, Pills for handball it wasn't, it was Gusta it breaks for Madweka David Izassi on the edge of his own penalty area, four plus stop he's starting to go to the break, Middlesbrough one, Chelsea nil with Hayden Hackney scoring. And they don't look comfortable, Chelsea, with those balls down the side of the centre-backs. Luckily, again, to Sassi, he's got that pace to get back into position against Coburn. Thiago Silva, not as quick as his centre-back teammate, and couldn't help Colwell when he needed him most. Here's Colwell in possession now. Played forward, Gallagher. Uh, waiting for the ball to get there, Housen saw it coming, Try to put a foot in, Jones then flicks it past Colwell and gets goal side of him just for a moment, but Colwell recovered brilliantly in the nick of time. He was in a wide position anyway, down by the touchline, uh, but had Jones been able to get past him, he had Crooks and Coburn in support. And let's put out a play for a throw on the middles for right-hand side. Yeah, I think with that extra bit of grass to run into, Colwell has got that pace with those long limbs of his but I think over the shorter distance Isaiah Jones has just got that extra bit of pace off the mark Isaiah Jones began his career play for Tooting and Mitchum they've had a few come through in Middlesbrough in the recent past they've had a, a quite a circuitous route to playing football at this level here's Johnny Harrison firmly established as a championship player of real repute for a number of years more than 400 championship games behind him Chelsea got it now with Disassi to Thiago Silva and worth pointing out that it is a very young Chelsea side as well in the grand scheme of things and the, the odd exception obviously Silva but there are several who are still south of 25 in this Chelsea team including this man in possession now Levi Colwell who's only 20 as is Gusto Madueke only 21 and then Caicedo 21 as well so they've got some youngsters here's Sterling left hand side of the penalty area onto his right foot clipping it in easily headed away by Dale Fry and then Disassi shoves into Coburn as the young Boris striker trying to make something out of nothing and Disassi gave him exactly that opportunity to break in the middle spring. and they're enjoying the moment and that's the thing with the EFL sides when they have these good cup runs with Fulham who hardly played in a major cup semi-final in their illustrious history these are very very special nights particularly if things are going your way and they are at the moment for Middlesbrough but still inside the first of the four halves of football in this tie but that's what you've got to use you've got to use the support when it's here and that's why that goal is so important but I think for the whole um, the whole two legs I think that first initial goal is so massive for Middlesbrough and even the belief 
Well, Gallagher's done really well for Chelsea. And playing his own little game of head tennis for a moment, flicking it up a couple of times and then turning and finding Sterling. Middlesbrough win it back though. Jones to Coburn. Coburn to Hackney. Hackney brought down by Caicedo. Referee Sam Barrett right on the spot said no. Gallagher for Chelsea. Working it out towards the right for Palmer. He chests it down and tries to come inside. Hackney wins it back with the aid of Clark. And now Hayden Hackney, the Middlesbrough goal scorer, will make his way up the left flank. Space for Crooks. Poking it away from Enzo Fernandez, he finds Barlasa. But Fernandez capitalises on a heavy touch from the former Rotherham man. And Chelsea are on the front foot again. Madweke giving chase. Engel follows him. As Madweke hooks it back in field to stop it going out of play for a throw, he does so straight to a red shirt. I think we're going to stop each time six added minutes in this first half. I think there was about five fouls there and Sam Barrett just let it all go in the end. I think Hackney probably did dive and then Palmer might have been pulled but not particularly firmly. So he just said carry on. Makes for a great game when there's not a lot there in the challenges. Fry for Vandenberg. Housen had to... Hit it forward hurriedly. Cole had a little bit more time when he received the ball to find a teammate and he couldn't either. And it goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the Middlesbrough right. It's going to be such a shame. I know that there's a congested football calendar. Such a shame we're not going to have two-legged League Cup semi-finals from next season onwards. I think that the format of this competition, when you get the two-legged semi-finals, it just really makes for... A, something unique it's uh, happened ever since I can remember that uh, the, the format has been uh, that way but no longer these are the the last two-legged semi-finals we're going to see Coburn putting the pressure on Dizassi can uh, get it back to his goalkeeper and Petrovic will just play it out yeah I think there's a romance about it that you each get an opportunity at your home ground in front of your own fans to make a difference in the two legs as you can hear tonight, I mean, the atmosphere and the Middlesbrough fans are making the absolute most of this. Sterling running with pace towards the edge of the penalty area. The ball is laid back for Enzo Fernandez. Caicedo, right footed effort, just wide. And Glover was scrambling, trying to dive. But he went past him, past the post as well. But a really presentable opportunity, well struck by Caicedo from the thick end of 30 yards, but just not quite on target. He's getting nowhere near it though, Glover. If this goes into the corner, he is not saving it. It is a brilliant strike from Caicedo, out of his feet. Just absolutely zings it along the floor, skipping off, off the surface. And Glover, he has to die, of course he has to, but he wasn't going to get to it. Well, he still hasn't scored a goal in Chelsea colours. Uh, Moises Caicedo after the £115 million move from Brighton. Now that was close. Their side needing something at the moment. They've got a free kick after a, a push by Jones on Colwell, but it's in Chelsea's half over on the left-hand touchline. And Enzo Fernandez uh, receives the uh, free kick taken quickly and works it out towards the right-hand side. Three and a half minutes of stoppage time still to go. You would talk sport where Middlesbrough lead Chelsea by a golden L. All works aside. The inside right channel for Cole Palmer. And Madweke, seen plenty of it, and has uh, looked the part. Finding Sterling, bottom left-hand corner of the area. Enzo Fernandez now trying his luck. Oh, Glover spilt it! And Palmer got on the rebound and hooks it over. A comedy of errors. And the Australian goalkeeper has had a huge let-off. He came to Palmer very quickly. But the way that he lay face down in the turf for a good six or seven seconds betrays his emotion. That is a glaring miss. I mean, he is one talented footballer, Cole Palmer, but this is an absolute disaster. This is a shocker because Fernandez takes the shot. Glover tries to collect it with his hands on his chest. It bounces off his chest straight to Cole Palmer. He is five yards out with no goalkeeper in the goal and he puts it over. That is pretty unacceptable for an elite level footballer not to just side foot that in. It's a disaster for Cole Palmer. And then Vandenberg is wired into a challenge there on Colwell is going to get booked. That was a really poor challenge. There's hardly been a poor challenge all night. That was the worst of them. Is he going to get booked? And the referee raced over, uh, put his right hand towards his pocket and then didn't book him. It's a free kick to Chelsea. 
Now taken by Enzo Fernandez. I mean, Palmer could have chested it in. <laughs> he yeah. probably couldn't quite have taken a touch, but he won't be able to believe that he's missed. So he's had two really good chances tonight. You can't. You can't miss that. I'm sorry, at this level, that's unacceptable to miss that chance. It's not that difficult. It just needs side putting in. The only thing I can think is he's nearly in again. And he has it right hand side of the air. He checks back onto his left foot. Save! And then as it bobbles off the goalkeeper, it hits Housen and comes straight back down into the hands of Glover lying on the ground. Well, wouldn't that have just been typical for someone that is so confident, Cole Palmer, to have missed a chance like that and then be slipped in down the right-hand side. He cuts back onto his left foot past Clark and then he takes the strike on. It's a good save from Glover. Bounces favourably, like you said, off house and straight into his hands. But another good chance for Palmer. You're just expecting him to curl that into the far corner. And the Scottish First Division, Falkirk, two Cove Rangers now. Falkirk unbeaten all season in the league. Eight points clear at the top. Hoping to extend their already existing club record to 25 unbeaten and they're two up at home, the Cove Rangers. Five minutes of stoppage time have elapsed here. About 30, 40 seconds to go. And it's Middlesbrough one, Chelsea nil. Hackney's gone. Eight minutes before half-time. Ambrose will work it forward on the left-hand side with the, the goal scorer himself, uh, but he's crowded out of it and has uh, pulled his man back. Free kick taken quickly by Chelsea, by Noni Madweke. Thiago Silva's got it. Chelsea have had 11 of the 15 attempts that we've had tonight, but they trail 1-0. They'll be ahead, way ahead on XG with the uh, misses they've had. Ball inside the penalty area is left by Vandenberg, and it goes out of play for a throw. And listen to this. For an ovation from the Middlesbrough fans as their red-clad heroes leave the field. Hayden Hackney's goal, only his fourth for his hometown club, getting on the end of an Isaiah Jones cross. It's only half the story. They could have been ahead inside 40 seconds. Laddie Lack getting injured in that. Ended up going off shortly after they lost another player, Bangura, to injury. But Chelsea have had a stack of chances. And only Cole Palmer will know how they're not ahead. It's Middlesbrough 1, Chelsea 0. Yeah, it did look like the odds were stacked against Middlesbrough. Two players going off in the first 20 minutes with injuries. But Hayden Hackney joining Borough at under 10 level. A local lad. And he has tapped it in. But I tell you what, Dean Ashton, that goal is all about the work from Isaiah Jones. Absolutely brilliant on the right, wasn't he? It was. It was, it was almost as if they'd worked on it. That ball into midfield. And he just spun away from Colwell, knowing that he was on a yellow card and just drove down that right-hand side. And then he still, when the ball bobbled around, he had that composure just to get out of his feet and flash it across. I'm not sure if he saw Hackney or not, but I just thought it was a great ball in to a dangerous position. And you're just hoping then that one of your attackers makes that run. And it was brilliant from Hayden Hackney, such a young man. But those are the goals where you have to make such an effort sometimes to, to make that run. It might not end up at your feet but it did and he had showed so much composure uh, Cole Palmer didn't have much composure he's missed two sitters I don't know if you remember he missed a sitter against Preston as well in the FA Cup at the weekend a one-on-one -on -one that he put wide similar to the first chance he missed here that he put wide the second one is it's actually un I literally don't believe he's missed that chance and Jim's right in commentary it comes at him quick but listen he's a he's a Premier League elite footballer no matter how young he is he has to put that in the net. It's unacceptable at this level, eh? You can't miss those chances. It doesn't get much easier than that. A side foot volley into an empty net. That, that's what it was. And he just put it over the bar. And um, what is it about playing as a Chelsea number nine that literally nobody can cope with? Are you glad you didn't move to Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's playing as a nine. He looked like he literally... <laughs> got it a barn door <laughs> and he's such a wonderful player he keeps getting himself into great positions and he probably should have scored a couple of the other opportunities that he's had and I just don't think it'll phase him and I hope it I hope it doesn't phase him no and listen I think there's a bigger problem here I don't think it's necessarily the the Chelsea number nine in inverted commas I don't even think it's a Cole Palmer problem I wonder what they do with finishing in training Madweke he skied one high into the north stand away to our left when he's got to at least hit the target. Generally, there's a couple of problems I've noticed with Chelsea. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. In this first half, their finishing is terrible. We've just discussed that. Levi Colwell, to the level required, is not a left-back because Isaiah Jones... I mean, 
Michael Carrick must be getting into Isaiah Jones now saying go at him go at him go at him he's on a yellow card go at Levi Colwell because there was an incident four minutes before the 45 were up where the two of them were in a race for a ball but Colwell was so casual it was almost like he's saying well I'm in the England squad I play for England I'm a Premier League player I'll get there first suddenly he realised Jones was past him in the blink of an eye and he thought oh hang on I've got some work to do here too casual is he, is he up to it as a left back well I think look he, I'm sure he'll start to realise it but you know he's a big name in, in English football now Colwell and whoever plays up against him is going to want to test that and and I think Jones has not shown him the respect as you should as you shouldn't do you should just get at your opponent and since that yellow card he's looked vulnerable but I mean he made that mistake in the first 30 seconds where he headed it back and and uh, and Latilaf got got in on goal and maybe that shook him and he doesn't look like a left back and I think he is going to be a centre half um, ultimately in his in his career and again that's unfortunate for Pochettino that Chilwell's injured and Kukurea's injured but he's let Matson go but it's like, I'm not yeah, sure yeah great point great point who would have been much more comfortable I think in that position against an Isaiah Jones type player when you become a fullback you've got to be ready to be up against those you know that electric pace those players that are going to run at you and be, and be, be able to cope with that Jones is petrifying there's no doubt and let, let, let's clear it up about um, Levi Colwell he was a left back in his junior days but I'm talking about is he a left back to the standard Chelsea need him to be at in cup semi-finals in finals in the Premier League in the European competitions they're hoping to be in next season uh, so is he a left back at that level probably not because they shifted him to centre back and also I, whenever I hear that it makes me laugh because as if whatever happens in youth football has anything to do with elite level pro football because it doesn't as we've seen with with the under 21s coming coming through that's why when they play in the cup competition now against proper full level teams you can see that that difference in the test it is uh, we've got the shock on here in this first leg Middlesbrough halfway down the championship lead Premier League Chelsea by a goal to nil next 45 to come live on talk sports Kick off on Talk Sport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Think January is bad in the UK? Here in Sweden, we get four hours of daylight and temperatures of minus 17. That's why in January, we make things a little easier. So when you choose a Volvo XC40, you get a £4,000 contribution plus 0% APR. Pretty sure I remembered everything. Anna, could you let me in? It's freezing out here. Ah, nearly everything. Order online or visit a Volvo retailer today. 50% minimum deposit, £4,000 contributed by Volvo. Finance provided by Volvo Car Financial Services UK Limited. Figure based on XC40 mild hybrid and varies by model. Terms apply. You've spent money on tools, travel or food for work. Rift can help work out what you're owed and get a refund bouncing back to you. In fact, on average, Rift get their customers three grand back. No bad, eh? Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. I like a rubber ball, I come bouncing. Come on, search Rift Tax Refunds today. Now January's forecast, starting cold and grey with outbreaks of boredom before brightening up dramatically as Fry Annuary rewards sweep across the country with Merlin annual passes, private cinema screenings and sun-soaked holidays for the whole family. The outlook is very nice indeed. Brighten up January for your family with Fry Annuary Rewards from McDonald's. Earn points on fries for a chance to win epic family prizes. Sign up on the McDonald's app now. 18 plus. Purchase medium or large fries by 31st of January for an entry into prize draw. Maximum 28 entries. Only via app at participating restaurants. Terms apply. Do you belong here? Standing next to me, distributing medical supplies in a town just hit by a hurricane. What's your gut saying? Want the volume down? Or, will you stay here and give us a hand? Still listening? Good. You belong here. Army. Recruiting now. Search army jobs. With LV, I can get my car insurance from just £299, which is just the kind of price I'm looking for right now. 
And if I'm hit by an uninsured driver, I won't lose my no-claim discount. Because insurance is simple when it's me and LV. No wonder we're rated excellent on Trustpilot. Get your quote today at LV.com. 10% of new customers pay £299 or less May to October 2023. Uninsured driver promise is non-fault, accident only. Other vehicle and driver details required. Imagine how it'd feel to win £10,000. <laughs> Like you'd smashed it. With Set for Life, you could win £10,000 every month for 30 years. Smash 2024 with Set for Life from the National Lottery. Play on the app. Prize may be capped. Account terms, rules, procedures and game specific rules apply. Players must be 18 or over. On 1089 and 1053, medium wave. Online. On your mobile. On the app. And on your smart speaker. Talk sport. Live at the Riverside, it's half-time here. Middlesbrough leading by a goal to nil. So let's get the half-time odds with Ladbrokes. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambler.org. And leading 1-0 Middlesbrough, the home side are 11-8 to to win this in 90 minutes. Chelsea 11-5 to to turn it around the draw, 9-5. to Cole Palmer to score in this match. He was 5-2. to It's been boosted to 11-4. to He's missed two sitters already. Uh, that's the latest odds with Labrooks. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Well, when we're done uh, just after 10, Sports Bar with Dean Saunders and this man, Jamie O'Hara. How you doing, Jamie? Evening, eh? How are we? Has anybody seen Jason Cundy? Oh, I can't wait. Let's hope, <laughs> let's hope it stays this way. We'll be absolutely slaughtering him. We'll be leaving him messages on his phone. Yeah, he always goes missing after a Chelsea loss. Talking of missing, Cole Palmer. No, we won't go there. Just oh. wait till wait till the nineties. Actually, talking of missing, Timo Werner at your old club Spurs. Are you happy mm. with that? Yeah, I think it's a good signing, Aid. I, I mean, look, I I I rate him. Look, I, we know we miss his chances. Jason Cundy has seen him more than uh, more than most, and you know he said he'll frustrate. And I think that's probably right. He will frustrate us, but. I think if you're looking at strengthening the squad that Tottenham have needed to do, I think he's a really good signing. He's, he's worth taking a punt on. He's quick. He's fast. You know, he, he's played at the highest level. And I think he'll score goals for us. Um, I think Andrew will get the best out of him. And I think it's something that we're looking to, 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 to push on with. And I think Timo Werner is a good signing for Tottenham. I'm really happy about it. Yeah, we all know and we're seeing it here at Riverside tonight what uh, Chelsea do to strikers. So yeah. that might be the uh, the factor that influenced uh, Timo Werner. But I was listening to a Chelsea fan, Rory Jennings, hosted the phone-in on Saturday night after you were done with Gabby. And, and uh, I thought that he actually said Werner would be a flop at Spurs. Now, listen, you could say he's a Chelsea Rory fan. Rory Jennings, no way. Of, of course he's, <laughs> he's going to say that. I, I get all of that. But he made quite a case. I mean, the thing with Rory is he makes some points and you're thinking, what's he talking about? And then he backs them up and you think, oh, hang on, he's got a point there. And, and I just wonder, the only thing, well, you've well, just well, mentioned well, it yeah, there, is the factor. Oh, yeah, but Aid, what, I mean, what, what's he backing up with? The guy's won the Champions League. He's, he's a top striker. All right, yeah, he misses chances. But we've got Richarlison playing up front. He misses, he couldn't hit a barn door. So at the end of the day, I think Timo Werner's a good sign. He's got top quality talent. Yes, he's going to be frustrating. But we like to play high tempo, fast, attacking football. He's rapid. Brennan Johnson's been playing on the left for us. We've had injuries, and he's flattered to deceive. His final ball is not great. So you've got Timo Werner, who can either play off the left, or he can play as a striker. You can play Son up front when he comes back. You can play to Werner off the left. I think I don't I don't see an issue in this signing at all. I think it's a smart move. It's you know we're not we're not tied into signing him. If it doesn't work out, then we play we've paid a loan fee, and then he goes back to Leipzig in the summer. I think it's a good deal. And Postacoglu has got the best out of players. You've seen that players who have been completely cast aside in the past with Conte. You know, like Basum has come back and have been brilliant. Son's been brilliant this year. You know, he's got players. He's got the best out of players. And I think you give him the opportunity with Werner. I think he's going to do a good job. I think you're going to be surprised at how good Werner could be at Tottenham. I think you've got a point. And my honest view of this is that all signings are a risk. But this is as low a risk signing yeah. as you could have, Jamie. Of course it is. I mean, we're not paying it's 17 million, I think, of buyout clause at the end of the season if he does well. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer, in my opinion. You're getting a player in January when we need it, when we've had injuries, we're fighting for top four, a player who has won the Champions League, can score goals, and has been playing at the highest level. He was at Chelsea when Chelsea were successful. You know, <laughs> like, let's, let's not get away from the fact the standards were absolutely high, massively high at Chelsea when Timo Werner was there. So people got frustrated with him because they were expecting Drogba. But they'd have him now. Timo Werner would walk in their team. Can you imagine how Chelsea fans are feeling? The fact that Kai Havertz 
came for a lot of money, as did Werner, and they're now at Arsenal and Spurs. Can you believe that? It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, let's hope that uh, Chelsea keep flopping, Aidan, I can keep slaughtering Jason Gundy every night. Absolutely. Well, the uh, players are going to be on their way out very shortly. Jamie, looking forward to the show on my way back. Jamie O'Hara, yeah. Dean Saunders, we'll be taking your calls um, in, what, around about uh, an hour or so's time on TalkSport, on the Sports Bar, 03717. Double two, double three, double four is the number to call. Please give them a listen through till 1 a.m. on TalkSport. Dean Ashton alongside me, the former England striker. I want to talk to you about the goal a little bit more. Hayden Hackney tapping in. Isaiah Jones with the work. If you watch the run of Hayden Hackney, he's in the centre circle when it all starts on the right-hand side with Jones. He's obviously off the ball and he's standing next to Moises Casado. They both run towards the Chelsea goal. Hayden Hackney supporting Isaiah Jones. As, Hayden, as Isaiah Jones is about to pull the ball back, Casado stops and Hackney steps on, taps it in. Casado's a hundred million pounds of midfielder and he just stops running. What's going on? Well, also, that is most of where the money has gone for his defensive work, his sensing danger, his athleticism to get into the position to stop those sorts of goals. So inexcusable, really, why he can be alongside a player when a ball is then played in, you're not. And and that's unacceptable. And especially, there's two of them. Fernandez is a deep line midfielder as well. So that is your job when they get down the sides, is to make sure you're in that position. Getting ready for the second half. The crowd's a little bit nervous, a little bit expectant. Chelsea have been missing chances. Middlesbrough have taken the only one, really, that they've had. It is Middlesbrough 1 Chelsea nil second half of this Carabao Cup semi-final first leg live on TalkSport with a man who once scored at this stadium for West Ham Dean Ashton alongside your commentator Jim Proudfoot who didn't uh, Middlesbrough lining up Glover in goal Vandenberg Fry Clark and Engel uh, Jones on the right Hackney on the left Harrison and Barlasa with Crooks in support of Coburn up front Chelsea Petrovic Gusto Di Sassi Silver and Colwell Caicedo and Fernandez, Madueke, Gallagher and Sterling, and Palmer. Chelsea in very dark blue, kicking it from left to right in this second half. Uh, Middlesbrough in all red and defending a 1-0 lead given to them by Hayden Hackney. Eight minutes before half-time. Chelsea unbeaten in their last 28 games against lower division opposition in domestic cup competitions uh, work to do to be able to pull that around but their XG was uh, just slightly over one better than Middlesbrough's in that first half you can sharpen up the finishing they'll still be pretty confident I would imagine that they can not just turn this around over the tie but can turn it around tonight and take a first leg lead back to London for a fortnight's time yeah I think the manner of the chances as well that they've had pretty clear cut especially for Cole Palmer I think that'll be a huge positive for Pochettino. But if you're Middlesbrough, you say, well, that's kind of the story of Chelsea's season. They create lots of chances without necessarily taking them. And can we get a second? Now Palmer trying to turn away from Clark. And he'll be able to just play it back towards uh, Vandenberg. Vandenberg stretching on the edge of his own penalty area, but able to feed Isaiah Jones. Ball's gone out. It's a Chelsea throw in front of the Chelsea travelling support over on that far touchline. 1-0 Middlesbrough lead in the National League. Barnet turned it around. 2-1 up at home to Dagenham and Redbridge. Zach Brunt for the side who started the day third. Coburn for Middlesbrough. Turning to try and get away from Enzo Fernandez, who stuck his foot in and picked his pocket. Gallagher picking up possession. Runs back towards halfway for a moment, but can turn when he realises there's no pressure coming. Playing Dizassi to Gusto to Madweke back for Gusto again. Dizassi inside the centre circle for Chelsea. His shot count in that first half was uh, in double figures, 11-4 in their favour. And they've had the majority of possession as well, about two-thirds of the ball. It's a good ball forward towards the edge of the area. Gallagher uh, trying to run down the side of Clark, couldn't do so. It's half clear by Middlesbrough. Madweke has it. Running at angle, right-footed ball in from Gusto. Header away from Fry. Kobo with the defensive had it back towards the edge of his own penalty area. Middlesbrough deal with that one. And it comes down towards Dizassi. And Chelsea deny Middlesbrough any possession inside their half at the moment. It's all the way to our right hand side. As Chelsea kick from left to right with Thiago Silva. Finding Levi Colwell. 
Norwell turning it back from the edge of the centre circle for Silver again. Silver just struggling forward towards Gallagher. Strong challenge going in to dispossess him from Dan Balassa. And Middlesbrough bring it forward with Crooks. Jones making the run. Crooks holding the pass. And finding Jones now right inside of the area. Coburn attacking it. Couldn't get his head to it. Headed away. Couple of touches from Chelsea players inside their box. Sterling steers it off the island and out of play for a Middlesbrough throw. But that counter-attacking threat is still there. Oh, and Colwell did not look comfortable at all. As Isaiah Jones made another great run just in behind him. It was played down the side. Isaiah Jones just clipped it up. Now he's got it again. We'll try and play it in here. And that one bounced a little bit awkwardly in front of Dizassi, who could clear. And he goes out of play for a throw. But again, he's picked the right ball, Jones. He hasn't just flashed it across this time. He stood it up for Coburn. He just couldn't get off the floor. I don't know that it was Desassi's strength that just meant he couldn't quite get the height on his jump, but he just didn't get off the floor, Coburn. That was the type of cross that you want to come over the top of the centre-back and head the ball and the centre-back into the goal. Uh, Johnny House has been fouled. A free kick taken by Middlesbrough. It's Coburn's 50th appearance for Middlesbrough today. He scored the winner against Spurs here famously in the FA Cup fifth round tie a couple of years ago. He had a very good loan spell at Bristol Rovers last season. He scored in the last two league games. And getting his chance tonight after the early injury to Lati Lat. Ends up on the deck there. Referee Sam Barrett allowing play to continue. Dizassi turns the ball back to his goalkeeper and Crooks pays lip service of putting a little bit of pressure on. Nothing really more than that. And trots back into position to his number 10 role. It's 1 0 to Middlesbrough. Hayden Hackney's goal. And is Assey bringing the ball forward. Over the halfway line, you would talk sport. Over on Talk Sport 2, Bradford beat Derby, knocked them out of the EFL Trophy playoffs. A victory for Wickham tonight as well. They've beaten West Ham youngsters. Brighton's youngsters threw on penalties against Reading. And Wimbledon leading Oxford 2 0 in that same competition. As Borough bring it forward here with Jones, but heavy touch just allowed Colwell the opportunity to remedy the situation. Headed on then by Caicedo, headed back by Engel, taken on by Hackney. But Disassi will turn and go back for. Thiago Silva and Chelsea get their shape back and Silva's got plenty of time to work out where his next ball's going to be five minutes into the second half Middlesbrough winning it back with Hackney and now Barlassa trying to get away from Palmer best he could do there was win a free kick and he's just stopped he was going to play the ball to Coburn and he realised that he'd gone offside the youngster so Barlassa stopped and got barged in the back as a result of that as he stuck the brakes on and um, Rear-ended. Colin Gallagher bringing him down. It's a free kick. Yeah, it's a brilliant bit of play from Barlazza because he, he knows that he's got no support once Coburn has gone offside. So he's just waiting. He's hoping for some contact. And Caicedo comes along and says, here's some for you. Down you go. So a free kick to Middlesbrough. 20 yards outside the penalty area. In from Dan Barlazza towards the far post. And it goes out of the play. Oh, no, just kept in by the keeper, Petrovic. It would have been a goal kick. It was headed by a Chelsea player into Crooks and, uh, I'm sorry, into Fry. And it rolled through for Petrovic. Now Gallagher will play it forward. Out towards Cole Palmer. Enzo Fernandez coming in off that left flank. is put under pressure. Colwell. Down the left-hand side for Gallagher again. Gallagher back inside his own half four. Levi Colwell made his England debut against Australia earlier this season. And now Dizassi. 10 yards, 15 yards inside Middlesbrough territory. Into Nonny Madweke. It's not a huge amount that Chelsea can call upon off the bench, incidentally, of which more in a moment. As Enzo Fernandez plays it out towards Raheem Sterling, left hand side of the area, pulled back by him for Colwell. Now out of Sterling again. Sterling level the edge of the box. Fernandez has got it. Fernandez working it onto his right foot, clipping it in, headed towards goal. Madweke didn't really get the power in it, a bit loopy. And Glover could dive to his right and save it. Yeah, Enzo Fernandez with a bit of a, a knuckleball cross, really. Not the curl, not the strike, just a bit of dip on the, the cross from Fernandez. Made it difficult, actually, for Nani Manoweke to get the right contact. And you're right, didn't get any power at all on it. Quite an easy save in the end for, for Glover. But I think we've seen the pattern of this second half. 
And here's Madueke again. Palmer. Outside him, Gusto made the run. Palmer working back into his central position. Sterling a little bit slow to react, and Housen just hammers it away. Yeah, I think we're just going to see Middlesbrough, of course. They want to protect the lead that they've got. They're going to make it as difficult as possible for Chelsea, allow the centre-backs and the deep-line midfielders to have it. But as soon as it goes into the feet of Gallagher or Sterling, by the way, KR Palmer, they are going to press from there. And it's down to Chelsea to find a way, really. And then, obviously, the counter-attack for Middlesbrough if they can. Disaster. Firing it out towards the left-hand side for Sterling. They've got a couple of attacking options on the bench in terms of experienced first-team players in uh, Mudrick and uh, Amanda Breuer. He's got a, more than 100 senior games behind him in his career. And then youngsters, Washington, Gilchrist, Williams and Golding making up the outfield contingent on the bench Madueke trying to get towards the byline he's done really well to get it across right from the byline he fired it over the goalkeeper but no Chelsea player could attack it at the far post just a little bit high and it goes out of play after a deflection for a Chelsea throw taken on their left hand side nine minutes of constant Chelsea pressure without them really being able to test Glover so far in this second period Right footed effort comes in from Disassi and fires over the bar and our monitors show a, a statistic that says it all Dean. Nine minutes into the second half, Chelsea have had 48 passes in Middlesbrough's half, Borough have had five in Chelsea's. Yeah, they've definitely come out a lot more defensive Middlesbrough. I think Michael Carrick just right now is trying to say we need to get up the pitch rather than sitting in. I've got to say, I've been impressed with Holly Madueke just then that ball out to the right hand side fizzed out towards him instantly killed it with a touch and then drove in past three players and was unlucky not to get the cross to a teammate Chelsea have won the last nine meetings of these two teams and hadn't conceded a goal in any of them and Hayden Hackney has broken that long drought tonight Here's Sterling, left-hand side of the Middlesbrough penalty area, but it's knocked away. It's Mark Vaduka that had scored the last goal for Middlesbrough against Chelsea. Jones making the run. It's knocked away by Thiago Silva on the edge of the penalty area. Colwell will be able to get it for. Bit of rain in the air here on Teesside. Fernandez doing well. Referee Barrett plays an advantage. Gustav down towards uh, Noni Madwake, right-hand side of the penalty area, taking on angle, left-footed ball, nice shape on it, absolutely nobody attacked it. They all kept station on the edge of the penalty area, and he curved one in, past the corner of the six-yard box, and out of play for a goal kick. Well, ultimately, that's his own fault, because really he should be good enough at this level to get his head up and just have a little look who's in there, rather than just playing it in and expecting, which he has every right to expect it, but you've got to at least see that there's that effort for a player to be running in the box, not just aimlessly put it in there. And as you made the point, where was the Sterlings, the Fernandes, Gallagher's of Palmer? Absolutely, like Hackney did for his goal, you know, really sprinting into the penalty area. Well, those are the thoughts of the old West Ham and England striker Dean Ashton here on Teesside tonight. Middlesbrough leading Chelsea 1 0. 35 minutes of this first leg to go here on Talk Sport. Gallagher switches out towards Madwaka, slightly off the control from him, and then Engel, as he tried to win it back, was caught by Gustav. And one number 27 put on the deck by the other. And a free kick goes Middlesbrough's way understandably in no hurry to restart proceedings so worked it back now for Fry Vandenberg fires it forward Coburn's going to give chase and his assy comes out sweeps up got in between the Middlesbrough striker and the goalkeeper but he was offside anyway Coburn and a free kick is taken quickly by Chelsea trying to get the ball forward as quickly as they can it's Cole Palmer who missed one extraordinarily good chance in the first half and missed another very presentable one before that hasn't had an opportunity in this second period so far just 12 minutes old is this Assi and is Assi down towards Marlo Gustav Gustav into the feet of Palmer and back again and left footed through the centre circle it's played on by Silva 
Silva to Colwell. Out of the left for Sterling. Sterling with a chance to try and take on Jones. Left footed ball, he's done well, stands it up. It's uh, attacked by Madweke, headed away from him. Comes outside the penalty area for Gusta, the right back. And he's done well to retain possession under duress from Hackney. Lays it back for Dizassi. Dizassi's ball just uh, arcs through the centre circle. Cole to Gallagher. Out of Walter Raheem Sterling again on the Chelsea left hand side. Sterling under pressure from Crooks. Crooks winning it, poking it back towards the uh, edge of his own box. And then Vandenberg under pressure, wanting to try and let the ball go out of play for a throw and he didn't have the legs to get there, he's lost it. Fernandes now for Chelsea, onto his left foot, then his right, setting it up on the edge of the penalty area. Caicedo couldn't get a shot in, full pass from him to try and find Gusto. Gusto runs round it, now feeds Donny Madueke. Back towards Gusto. Home crowd sensing that their side need a, a little bit of audible support to aid this defensive effort. High ball inside the penalty area. Palmer attacking it. Glover catching it. And it remains 1-0 to Middlesbrough. Well, that's what Middlesbrough are doing. They're allowing Chelsea to have that ball wide and they don't mind if the cross is played in. So if the cross is going to be played in, you cannot float it. You, there can't be any air on that ball at all because Clark won the last header against Meadow AK, which he's going to, and then Glover just comes out to claim on that second cross. If you are going to play that cross in, it has to be flat, it has to be whipped, if you've really got any chance of your forwards getting on the end of it. Chelsea have had nearly all of the possession in this second half, and they've got it again now. Just play forward out of the... Uh, the right angle has got it back that possession which was in the mid 60s in the first half up in the high 70s for Chelsea in the second period Coburn the out ball for Millersbury couldn't hold it up it was well won back by Housen and Johnny Housen who played more than 200 games for Leeds nearly 200 for Norwich he's now played more than 300 for Middlesbrough and he's found Engel here Engel one of the summer signings he's given it away Caicedo coming on to it with Chelsea's acquisitions in the last transfer window Enzo Fernandez to Madweke Madweke back towards halfway for Gusto Gusto sending it through the centre circle for Thiago Silva we've reached the hour mark here on TalkSport in this first leg so third of the way through the tie as a whole Middlesbrough one up here's Madweke right hand side of the box Gusto getting it in it's got it past Clark and then the shot on the turn from Gallagher a high tariff chance goes wide. Well, that's a centre forwards chance because it's a great ball in. As I was just talking about those crosses, Gusto just puts one in nice and flat, fizzes it in along the floor, and a proper centre forward here backs in to Dale Fry, swivels and put, puts this in the back of the net. And he just didn't look comfortable, Gallagher, with the presence of Fry just pulling at him slightly. He tries to swivel and volley, and he just cuts it into the ground and bobbles it past the post well he is a player who's gone 28 games without a goal Conor Gallagher it's a run that goes back to May uh, when he netted against Bournemouth uh, there's action on the Chelsea bench beneath us and Mudrick and Breuer uh, both going to be coming on just past the hour mark Middlesbrough 1 Chelsea nil. tomorrow oh, I might have some idea might have some idea as uh, which of the two sides are going to be more likely from the other semi-final to be playing the winners of this one uh, we'll find out together seven o'clock the build-up starts at Anfield ahead of an eight o'clock kickoff as Liverpool meet Fulham that's tomorrow night Chelsea back in action Saturday they take on Fulham we've got that one for you here on TalkSport as well Sterling on the edge of the penalty area that's knocked away but only as far as Madueke picking it up three red shirts around him Hackney digs it clear from inside his penalty area Coburn then does enough to poke it further away stop Chelsea having an immediate phase of play back in the Borough penalty area they will be able to come again now it's laid out towards Madweke poor pass to him which just gave Engel the chance to get it clear and now Chelsea will make the change Madweke the first player coming off uh, Mudrick is coming on to replace him so Mudrick for Madweke I'm and I'm Armando Breuer is the second one coming on. Yeah, I'm surprised at that. I think Madueke has been actually better than Sterling in this game, which surprised me why he's the one coming off. 
and the other change sees Enzo Fernandez make way. So you think the Gallagher will sit slightly deeper now, and Breuer will lead the line. waste the money is the uh, cry aimed in uh, Enzo's direction as he leaves the field Chelsea take the throw goes back for Disassi and so Mudwake and Breuer on for uh, sorry Mudrick and Breuer on and Mudwake and Fernandez the players that have come off Sterling it's caught a little bit late by Clark. Play goes on. Right hand side for Chelsea. Gusto's ball inside the penalty area. Trying to give Breuer something to attack. It's knocked away. And then uh, put further clear by Middlesbrough, who might be able to work a counter attack. Hackney did well to keep it alive, but he couldn't find a teammate. Uh, Hackney then just barges Kaiseda to the ground off the ball. Referee might revisit that in a moment, but Chelsea have still got it, so plays the advantage, and it comes back towards Conor Gallagher again. Gallagher to Sterling and swiftly back again. Mudrick lurking on the edge of the penalty area Broy the furthest advance of the Chelsea players waiting for something to come in for him here Silva out of Colwell 19 gone second half and Chelsea still trying Disassi 20 outside the penalty area getting close to the edge of the box finds Gusto Gusto now to Raheem Sterling and back again Gusto waving his right foot over the top of the ball and then plays it out to his right for Sterling Gusto coming back in again. Middlesbrough just keeping everything tight in terms of a regimented defensive shape behind the ball. And fighting Chelsea to try and play through them. Trying to get Chelsea to funnel the ball out wide. Sterling level with the right-hand side of the box. Gusto wider still. Back for Sterling again. Sterling then trying to make a, a run forward for... Gusto to be able to play the pass. Hackney stopped him doing that. Just stepped across the line. Middlesbrough haven't got the ball back. Pass after pass from Chelsea, but they're just going sideways. It's going to take some effort, though, isn't it, to hold them out for probably near on half an hour if they're going to play as deep as they are, Middlesbrough. Okay, say they're back for Gusto. And that line, defensive line at the moment, seven yards from goal. Gusto to Disassi. Disassi's outside the penalty area. So too Moises Caicedo, but he's got time to measure across and Jones did well got a shout from somebody to leave it he deliberately stepped away from the line of the cross Mudra couldn't get there coming in behind him it's out of play from Middlesbrough front but I can't see them changing particularly because Chelsea are really struggling to actually create a clear goal scoring opportunity which they were in the first half when Middlesbrough were trying to play out they're not trying to do that now they're trying to go a bit longer to Colburn who's finding it difficult up there on his own that's a good play though yeah he has held it up well and now Jones to his right hand side Crooks is in the middle can Jones find him still Jones goes he will find Crooks but the ball went in behind him he can get there to recycle it Engel in support for him back for Crooks and now to Housen here's Hackney Crooks making a good run inside the area Hackney try to improvise the pass and get it into his path he couldn't Chelsea will clear Caicedo slicing it away and I think it hit both of his feet there and goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the Middlesbrough left hand side but that's the kind of opportunity that Michael Carrick will be hoping that Middlesbrough will be able to exploit more effectively than that it was three against two for a moment for Borough as they brought it forward and they got a corner they have I don't think it should have been a corner I think the last touch there came off Hackney might just have flicked his heel but a corner has been given it's Middlesbrough's first yeah we had a good angle probably the best angle actually of any of the officials up here in the stand on this side and again you've just got to try and take one of these opportunities maybe from a set play Dan Barlasa will take the corner Clark stands on the goal line Coburn inside the six three making runs from deeper inside the penalty area far in towards the far post Chelsea win the first ball Breuer hammers it away with the second touch and now for a throw to Middlesbrough on halfway and we're midway through the second half here on Talk Sport Middlesbrough 1 Chelsea 0 uh, late equaliser in that game in uh, League 2 in Scotland for Peterhead at home to Dumbarton uh, Dumbarton up to second if they uh, win that but they've just been pegged back it'll be Peter Head who was second at the end of the night as things stands 1-1 in that game and midway through the second half of this one Middlesbrough leading 1-0 
That was a good opportunity there, wasn't it, from Middlesbrough down that right-hand side. What surprised me, actually, is that is that Jones didn't drive towards goal himself. I think he was too interested in what Crooks was doing rather than going himself. Now, Gusto thought he was fouled and he's down writhing in pain, but plays allowed to continue. Hackney's got it. Edge of the penalty area. Setting it up for Barlasa. He's cut across it and sent it over the top right-hand corner. He was taking two bigger strides, Barlasa, and that's why he was never going to have control of it. He was taking giant strides towards the ball rather than those little Rooney steps, as I would say. Wayne Rooney was one of the best. Little steps and then strike. Instead, those big lumbering legs towards the ball. And then, of course, he was out off balance and going to put it over the bar. Yep, still hasn't scored for Middlesbrough in his year here on Teesside. His last goal coming for Rotherham at home to Hull back in 2022. Uh, Gusto still down hurt. It was his right foot that bore the brunt of the challenge. He was just trying to uh, poke the ball forward. He got caught by the sliding crooks. And he's now receiving treatment away to our right. So just over 20 minutes. Charles and Mauricio Pochettino now just to gather his thoughts whilst Gusto receives treatment. What does he want to see more of in the second half of this second half well I mean he's made his changes I think he'll want to see better quality when the ball is out wide and also more effort to actually get in the box because that's what Middlesbrough are giving you they're offering you an opportunity to cross the ball in and so you have to flood the box because ultimately if the ball is good enough and you've got good movement in the box it doesn't matter whether you're ne not necessarily tall enough you get across your defender there's goals there but if you just keep, constantly just keep playing it in a big semicircle around the centre backs and back out again, Middlesbrough will be happy. Uh, Gusto has uh, received his treatment. Uh, they got Alfie Gilchrist on the bench. Who played it right back against Preston at the weekend in the FA Cup tie. So uh, they have already made replacement for Gusto if he suffers any lingering problem as a result of that injury. But he is going to be coming back on in a moment. We're in the final 20 minutes of this first leg, and it is set up beautifully. Middlesbrough 1, Chelsea 0. And a reminder is Liverpool Fulham tomorrow, this time tomorrow. Disaster. Coming forward here for Chelsea. Still inside his own half for a moment. Back from Gusto to Disaster again. And Michael Carrick standing almost motionless inside his technical area, just standing observing and Mauricio Pochettino much more animated so the left hand side of the big Middlesbrough crest down by this near touch line as Mudrick the blonde haired Ukrainian comes forward ends up on the deck wasn't foul it's very quickly back on his feet when plays are allowed to continue and he's got possession again Mudrick trying to bulldoze his way through couldn't get through that time either Coburn playing it forward oh stumble and Coburn now with an opportunity to run at the back line still he goes he's forced wide at the left hand side of the area and in the end in being forced wide he's overrun it and he goes out of play for a goal kick he used absolutely all of those 39 years of experience there Jago Silva because he wasn't quick enough but he just kept giving Coburn as he slipped he just kept giving him a nudge at exactly the right time and all that is his experience and then Coburn in the end wasn't able to react Hello Gustav Chelsea midway inside the Middlesbrough half again with 18 minutes to go. The clock ticking out pretty quickly for the travelling blue supporters. It plays a long journey home tonight. Ball out towards uh, Piccolo Mudrick. Mudrick faced up by Jones, who provides the main speed and counter-attacking threat for Middlesbrough, but has got a really good, tight defensive side to his game as well. As uh, Middlesbrough... Have uh, so Chelsea should have say have found out Gusto fizzing a low ball inside the penalty yeah, might break Sterling's way Sterling for Mudrick oh the goalkeeper again spilt it and made the save well he was sensational against Villa here on Saturday night he's got away with a couple today <laughs> that's another one isn't it that technique of obviously trying to take it into the chest when it's not directly at him straight hasn't worked twice I wouldn't try that again if I was him. But again, it just shows if you get a delivery whipped in there, it can fall for you 
as a Chelsea player. If you don't, if you just keep passing it around, it'll be easy for Middlesbrough. That whipped ball in, just bobbled around, ended up at Mudrick's feet for a strike. There's a, an apprentice of Spurs back in the day, Tom Glover, but he made his name in his native Australia with Melbourne City. Started all of the League Cup ties this season. And he's still got a clean sheet against his name here, but there's a fair element of fortune in that. Coburn trying to get it forward for Middlesbrough, leading the line, the youngster as best he can, the 21-year-old with little in the way of support and so much experience in the Chelsea back line to try and navigate. He's lost possession here, and so too is Raheem Sterling. Hackney, Sterling won it back, Coburn then did really well to win it back. Crooks slides in, Caicedo won it from here. And now Mudrick towards the edge of the penalty area. Couldn't find a way past Vandenberg, the youngest player on the pitch. And a sliding chance from Colwell puts it out, but it's a Middlesbrough throw. And another chance to run just a few seconds off the clock. Took a chance there. Levi Colwell went charging across, sliding in. Only just got there. If he hadn't, he was off. But I have to say, Mudrick's come on and he's ran into the defender four out of the five times he's gone to dribble just literally ran into the defender no bit of skill it's just been poor from him to start with he's got it again running towards the edge of the penalty area and he has been able to slip it into the path of Breuer this time but the return ball wasn't forthcoming Chelsea on the edge of the penalty area to get it back with Palmer Palmer to Gusto Gusto with a little shimmy and then a check and then a left footed ball inside the box which is cleared. Clark getting it away. Disaster. Thiago Silva. Close to it. Set up a very well populated passing lane today. Sterling towards the edge of the area. Right footed effort from him. And he too has cut across it. And he said it high and wide at the top right hand corner. And we've got 15 minutes to go in this first lap. Nah, it's not too far away actually from Raheem Sterling. Just cutting in off that left-hand side, faking as if he was going to shoot to start with. I think it was past Barleza, and then looking to curl into that far corner, probably about two yards off par and, a bar and post. Hasn't scored a goal in his last 20 semi-final ties for club and country, Raheem Sterling. 20 minutes to go, or no, 15 minutes to go, I beg your pardon, in this. probably about 20 minutes of playing time. Middlesbrough 1, Chelsea 0 on TalkSport. Jim Bradford and Dean Ashton talking you through the action in the North East tonight. Uh, the uh, rain has abated. And Thiago Silva will bring it forward. And fight Colwell. Colwell's on halfway. Wants Thiago Silva to take the responsibility. The Brazilian working it between the lines. Breuer, the Albanian international. Finding Palmer. Palmer clipping it in. Fry heads it away. Then help further forward into the path of Hackney Hackney setting up Coburn Coburn to his right Thiago Silva read that before it fell for Matt Crooks Chelsea bringing it forward again quickly with Conor Gallagher Adam Mudrick Sterling in a bit of space for him Mudrick bringing the ball down attracting red shirts around him bees to the honeypot and eventually Housen can get it away but in getting it clear only presents it to Colwell and Thiago Silva will bring it back forward again now towards the edge of the penalty area Dizassi laid off by Palmer on the right hand side Gusto's touch just a little bit too heavy it's come off him last Engel putting the pressure on and it's out of play for a goal kick which will be taken by Middlesbrough a big game uh, in Scotland tonight Falkirk have beat Cove Rangers 4-0 so they're 11 points clear now at the uh, top of the Scottish First Division and unbeaten in 25 filed 2 hardly pull 1 a result in the National League and Wimbledon have beaten 10-man Oxford 2-0 in the EFL Trophy James Tilly scored both of those goals they're still playing the other National League tie Barnett leading Dagenham and Redbridge by two goals to one in stoppage time there I'll tell you when it's full time here's Silva got 13 minutes to go in this one and Dizassi plays it down towards the Chelsea right hand side for Marlo Gusto feels like a, a big big 13 or so minutes though doesn't it especially for Middlesbrough I think going into that second leg if they can hold out or even add another one it would give them a real chance Gallagher he's running around the ball 
And now bringing it forward out towards uh, Marlo Gusto on the right hand side. So much to react to tonight with this uh, scoreline and your views on the Chelsea performance. Jason Cundy would love to hear from you just as we're looking forward to hearing Jason's take home from this game. And it's on the sports bar tonight 03717 22344. And tomorrow morning, Alan Brazil and Ali McCoyst on breakfast. Uh, Ryan Barbel. John Barnes and Scott Minto amongst the names joining the pair they'll be looking back at this game and looking ahead to Liverpool's League Cup first leg semi-final tie against Fulham tomorrow and that's with Ali and Alan tomorrow morning from 6 on TalkSport Breakfast you fancy something a little bit different on your morning commute Chris Evans on Virgin Radio on DAV or via the Virgin Radio app 12 minutes to go Middlesbrough 1 Chelsea 0 and the Borough fans pick up song again long throw down the right hand side held on by Coburn to Jones it's come off Jones goes out of play for a throw which will be taken over on the Chelsea left because of the two early injuries Middlesbrough have only got one more junction at which they can make changes and I think that will be going through Michael Carrick's mind might want to bring the uh, experience of O'Brien on potentially at some stage but he, he needs to make the change uh, at a point where he knows really that he's not going to need any more no and also he'll be really pleased with how this second half has gone you know Chelsea have really struggled to create anything of note really compared to that first half and you know we talked about the fragility still of this Chelsea side and they're struggling to really know how to find a way through Sterling trying to help it on one back by Caicedo there's not a lot of inspiration to go with the perspiration for Chelsea at the moment those two misses from Cole Palmer in the first half looking more and more significant with every passing minute although of course this still only the first lap just about a tick into the 80th minute Moises Caicedo looking into his right helps up in the air with the left boot of Cole Palmer now towards Gusto Gusto attacking the bottom right hand corner of the penalty area but Engel has done really well played for then by Gusto Sterling making the run ball past him Glover watches it over the line out of play for a goal kick and Middlesbrough 10 minutes away from a first leg lead that's happened too often for Chelsea in the second half that final bit of quality just hasn't been there the link between the players hasn't been there players making the wrong decisions in terms of either running into defenders when to pass when to dribble you know they've been asked big questions by Middlesbrough in terms of they're sitting very very deep and saying come on what what have you got what answer have you got I mean Broya has he even touched the ball yet Armando Broya I don't think he has I can't remember him touching it no barely if he has he just has had no service whatsoever but Cole Palmer will try to do something about that now and he's worked it through the midfield Mudrick to Gallagher out towards Breuer and he's uh, got an opportunity here left hand side of the penalty area cross the six yard box and Sterling never really committed to it didn't throw himself at it didn't make any contact and probably just too far ahead of him anyway and it goes out of play for a goal kick no I, th I think he just doesn't anticipate this Breuer does brilliantly just to drag it onto his left foot and then I think he's probably shooting Breuer having been a striker you usually are and he just flashes it across and Sterling just doesn't think it's coming across really he should be diving in sliding in and just tapping in well he scored his first goal in 12 games against Preston on Saturday Breuer so scored at Fulham in the Premier League back in October but still only on three first team goals for Chelsea had that really productive loan spell at Southampton uh, but has suffered with horrendous ACL problems in the time since then Cole Palmer bringing it forward again for Chelsea and working through the midfield for uh, Thiago Silva Dizassi down towards the Chelsea right for Gusto Gusto's ball in for the right hand side of the penalty area one of the Borough substitutes Clark and hook it away Crooks will chase after it he's been very game Matt Crooks full of industry Dizassi gets it back again for Chelsea he's gone route one this time trying to get the ball over the top of Friday find Breuer and then there's a coming together on the edge of the area it's come off Housen and goes out for a Chelsea corner yeah Housen was looking for the the foul he instigated the contact actually with Breuer 
hence why the referee rightly so Sam Barrett just pointed to a Chelsea corner so a corner which will be taken on the Chelsea left seven inside that penalty area Clark throws himself at it diving headed clearance was attempted didn't really get much purchase on it Harrison can do the rest and can clear goes out of play for a throw taken really quickly Mudrick now right footed ball in that is really poor over here got the angle wrong and missed the teammate by 10 yards and also no one was even looking for it nobody was making a move as if they're going to run into the box so why put it in recycle it back back out to Palmer again wait for people to be set in the middle Coburn's offside long ball four from Glover and Coburn chested it down flagged offside Glover really frustrated the goalkeeper threw his hands out seven to go Middlesbrough still leading courtesy of that Hayden Hackney goal which was 45 minutes ago now this stage of the first half Gustav coming in off the right flank laying it back for Disassi it's been another listless one dimensional Chelsea performance this certainly not a mortal wound in their Carabao Cup run that goes without saying with the second leg to come but they haven't been great Mudrick, left-hand side of the penalty area. And Vandenberg, who's shown up really well in the biggest game of his career, gets it away. Crooks should be able to help get it further clear, but he's just knocked it straight into Mudrick. Another strong challenge on the edge of the penalty area from Housen, as if his life depended on it. Chelsea forced back towards halfway, but they'll come again. Gizassi, Caicedo, Palmer, now out towards Gusto. Breuer in the near post area, fired into him, headed away by Clark. Clark second to it then it ricochets towards the edge of the penalty area in an effort from Gallagher's blocked and Middlesbrough just stick it 60 yards upfield desperately try and get their tired bodies to push out and condense the play Palmer hooks one over the top it's easily knocked away Coburn winning the seconds Crooks plays it forward might have been a handball it falls Coburn's way Coburn taking on Disassi knocks it one side of him runs the other and then just as he's about to cross completely falls over tackled by the invisible man ended up going down Chelsea get it away Crook supplies pressure on Disassi Chelsea down in their right back area making a meal of getting out here Caicedo back for Palmer Palmer to Gusto they have been able to play their way out and now it's Chelsea's opportunity to bring it forward Coburn tried to bring Gusto down and missed him Coburn looking really tired now and Chelsea can hook it down towards Breuer and he's level with the edge of the middles for a penalty area Chelsea looking for an equaliser on the night Conor Gallagher right footed far too high well, Raheem Sterling needed to be 15 foot 8 not 5 foot 8 to get on the end of that well, that is really poor and a pretty eloquent summation of where <laughs> Chelsea have been going wrong and even then he might have struggled yeah, it was terrible in the end from Conor Gallagher trying to pick out Raheem Sterling at the back post but again half an opportunity for middle from the break Coburn did everything right and then just at the vital moment to slip I mean I'm sure he'd be thinking I wish I'd worn studs instead of the the moulded boots the uh, the kit man's going to get it afterwards that's for sure <laughs> well, he's back on his feet now I mean he's given everything for the cause he hasn't quite played the full 90 but he's only sort of four minutes at each end short of that and he came on so early it'll be emotionally tiring as well for these young Middlesbrough players several of whom are Middlesbrough fans as boys Coburn one, Hackney another ball back with Engel and Clark so he turned into trouble ably turned out of it goes back to his goalkeeper Glover gets it away long right footed ball four from him Jones trying to gamble and get on the end of a Crooks flick on but that wasn't forthcoming Thiago Silva wanted in the air Harrison continuing to battle and belying his seniority has uh, done really well put a real shift in Johnny Harrison such a firm favourite here Gallagher still got it for Chelsea to Colwell and back for Gallagher again Chelsea going to be bringing Gilchrist on it might well be Gilchrist for Gusto with three minutes to go he's just stripped and ready for action Alfie Gilchrist will want to be just his fourth senior appearance the 20 year old 
ball over on the Chelsea left Mudrick's high ball inside the area Clark heads that one away as well we're in the 88th minute Middlesbrough 1 Chelsea now Gusto on the right hand side into the uh, feet of Breuer back for Gusto again and now it comes down towards Dizassi Dizassi to Caicedo and he will turn and Middlesbrough just keeping things very tight the back five rooted to the penalty area the midfield four not too far ahead of them Jones trying to stop the Mudrick cross coming in couldn't quite but it was swept away at the near post by Vandenberg Crooks battling for it ends up on the deck referee allows play to go on Borough fans thought Gallagher put him on the deck referee says no Crooks is still down Dizassi it's not up to Chelsea to put the ball out of play here it's up to the referee to blow the whistle sees no need to do so Gusto's ball inside the area Broy trying to turn Clark hammers it away doesn't go out so play will still continue now Sam Barrett is going to stop things and wave the Middlesbrough train the medical staff on so that Crooks can receive whatever treatment is necessary yeah difficult from our angle to really see exactly what happened over there to me it looked as if Gallagher just kind of swung cro Crooks around and I think probably hurt himself as he landed on the ground and Crooks felt as if he was just about in the right position and maybe Conor Gallagher stood on the back of his heel perhaps as he tried to get the ball off him well I just wonder whether the, the right angle as he went to ground maybe his right ankle just got caught and his body weight as he swung his leg round just put stress through that ankle that's what's uh, being attended to uh, so there's going to be more time added on at the end of the game Chelsea make the change Gilchrist the shaven headed 20 year old defender coming on for his League Cup debut he made his full debut for the club against Preston on Saturday uh, I think he's going to end up being a centre-half but he's uh, a right back in his appearances for the first team at the moment so he's on for Gusto and before play restarts I think we're going to find out how many extra minutes are going to be added and it was six at the end of the first half it, it's going to be something broadly similar to that I would imagine well, fourth official has got the numbers board in his hand Darren England indicating four and the Borough fans are pretty happy with that so four minutes to go in stopping side Middlesbrough one Chelsea nil and a routine ball from Colwell misses Mudrick and goes out of play for a Middlesbrough throw and just looked across to the Chelsea fans as Colwell went to play that to Mudrick and it just went past him out of play absolutely furious as they rightly should be because now, the opportunities in the first half and in the second half I'm sorry it's been way below the level in terms of creativity for this Chelsea side Coburn fouled free kick to Middlesbrough 15 yards inside their own half he'll be aching Coburn tomorrow morning he'll know that he's been in a game today Dale Fry is going to take this free kick. One of the long-standing Middlesbrough players who made his debut for his hometown club as a 17-year-old way back in 2015. Such a special night for him. Glover taking the free kick. Aiming pretty much towards the corner flag. Hoping that Jones can get there. Crooks trying to pick up the second ball. Jones is there down on the right-hand touchline. Middlesbrough win it back. Hackney stretched but couldn't bring it under control. The Chelsea counter-attack could be on. Sterling, Clark committed himself. It came off him. And then Engel hammers it to safety. And out of play for a throw. Two and a half to go. That was all or nothing from Clark. From about 10 yards out, he thought, I'm going for it just dived in towards Sterling luckily got a tiny touch as Housen puts in a brilliant tackle again he's been outstanding yeah, he's not played like a man in his mid-30s has he Johnny Housen his first ever semi-final Hillsborough laying the foundations tonight for what they will hope will be their first final in this competition since they won it in 2004 runners up a couple of times in the 90s they were runners up in Europe and in 2006 in a famous semi-final night here against Stour Bucharest 
of this if they can hold on for the remaining minute and a half will be another very famous semi-final night for the Smoggies they're nearly there to take a first leg advantage to West London in a fortnight's time Palmer now Thiago Silva Moises Caicedo down for Alfie Gilchrist Chelsea with possession 10 yards outside the penalty area it feels as though they've been there all night Palmer spread at his left hand side for Disassi into the final minute of stoppage time the Middlesbrough fans doing their best to sing their side home Mudrick it's high Gilchrist coming round the back heads it into the side netting from a tight angle it's taken a touch on its way through Chelsea Dean have a late corner yeah he did well there Gilchrist just to make sure that he got on the end of it before it went out I think it was Hackney that did the defensive work there to get back and it came off his head and into the side netting late corner right at the end in from Palmer first touch from the Middlesbrough defender but the referee had seen some pushing and shoving free kick to Middlesbrough and that'll be that they're going to win this tonight some result for Middlesbrough what a performance defensively Free kick which will be taken by the Middlesbrough goalkeeper Tom Glover might just about be the last kick of the night it is advantage Middlesbrough going to West London in a fortnight's time Chelsea one dimensional and listless Middlesbrough executing the game plan to perfection and it's the lifelong Borough fan Hayden Hackney that has provided the first leg advantage tonight a famous Riverside semi again they believe here that they can make it to Wembley a little bit of revenge for some horrible cup defeats at the hands of Chelsea over the years it's only half the job done but Middlesbrough believe Middlesbrough won Chelsea nil to set up an absorbing second leg you're not wrong. Papa's got a brand new pig bag. Burrow's got a brand new hero. A kid from the academy with the winner over Premier League Chelsea. A kid from the academy scoring the decisive goal against those billionaires from the King's Road. Extraordinary stuff, Dean Ashton. What an atmosphere in here. Fantastic.